All together. Oh, it's okay. all right. Now I'll run the record, so be careful. Pull up our what's the first item on our agenda here? We got uh, the Sanitary Sewer Discussion on County Road 28 for Master Plan. Well, our problem on County Road 28 is similar to what we've had in the uh, Cheshire and uh, Grandview Park area, and that's individual cost. So in order to get the cost under control and down to a number that people will be more comfortable with and be able to afford, we need to add in more uh, parcels. That's where you come in. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, we did look at it, um, obviously, both ways, and probably the most uh, the most uh, reasonable, I guess, way would be with this sewer district here. Uh, I think this was the county at some point in time. Um, but it's it basically encompasses that that Emerson uh, and uh, County Road Twenty Eight. Uh, triangle um at the last meeting we kind of talked about maybe trying to go further east and west off of that triangle but um I, after further review looking at the grading um that area in there is about or somewhere around that 780 contour and then it drops the 770 to the east and to the west so you, you wouldn't necessarily be able to add those individuals without either making the sewer significantly deeper or adding in pump stations on either side to, to bring that up. Um, so I, I think that's, you know, the, the most simplest district is kind of around what uh, Rich has here. There's probably an opportunity to add in a couple um, unless we're gonna, yeah, it's, it's that area. Are you, you are you sharing a plan? Uh, we don't see it. Okay, let me try. How many more? Uh, this is yeah, this is uh, rough. like it's an additional like forty five units over what was um, so uh, which was uh, from where we were. We're looking at district. Emerson twenty eight and the rest of like we're like triangle. Just triangle, right? Guys. And that and that's because and that's. Um, no, well, it drops off going that way and it also drops off going the other way. I was, you know, trying to see where the 780 and 770 contour comes in. I mean, there might be an opportunity to get a couple lots here and there, depending right. upon what your final design and where, you know, balancing out depth of sewer, et cetera. But I mean, for, for this, per, you know, for this level of discussion, I would say, that, you know, that this triangle area is, is where we're looking for right now. Um, you know, putting in a couple of units here and there is not going to um, change the numbers appreciably. So that would take in all, an Emerson there between Christian mm -hmm. Road and 28. It would take in all those. Yep. And then the, and a few. it's a few on the south side to the um, west. And then there's one parcel, I think, on the north side of Emerson um, past County Road 28. That's, yeah, that's, they're all they're all kind of in that area where I can um reasonably get them to uh with a reasonable depth sewer i can i can pick them up um again the, the topography drops off um uh, from those locations to say uh, the intersection of uh sand hill it's like somewhere around 770 and as soon as you go down with the heading west down emerson you immediately start to drop into the 770 so 10 foot i mean that would mean that i would have to be 10 foot deeper with the pump station 10 foot deeper with the sewer to pick those guys up, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a balancing act for adding units and increasing cost uh, to do so. Well, Greg, I don't know if we talked about there is sewer here that runs down this way. Yep. Uh, comes down airport. I'm sorry, Emerson from 332, and down fire off the pump station. Is it would it be. I haven't, checked the, I haven't checked the depth of that to see like where it would make sense or if it would be. I just wonder if this could run this way to here. Oh, it, um, yeah, it's possible. It looks, I mean, there's a stream right I mean, it looks like you're going to run it to a low point, possibly two low points with, with the way that um, mm -hmm. stream breaks. 
So you might be able to pick a spot that's deep enough there and then run sewer up to Reser, but then you wouldn't necessarily, then, it, you know, the, the grade breaks again coming from Tri yeah. 28 back towards Parkside. Yeah, because this goes downhill, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of those things where, you know, without adding another pump station, you know, it's, it gets difficult to kind of pick everybody up because uh, it grade rises from the south to the north, and that triangle is kind of like a 789. Right here. It's like a hump here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we try. Well, well, we try doing the triangle and see if we can make it fly with just the triangle. You might be able to do that. What we're going to do is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Terry, we have to go back to the town board and amend our sewer master plan and add this to it. Yeah. Because it wasn't in there originally. Right. Uh, the master plan was adopted in what 2016 or 17, something around there. Yeah. Getting to be modified by the resolution to, to you know expand the district and pull in more property. So, but when where does this come? This doesn't attach to the questionable line that by yeah, it, it discharges right now based on what um, Bruce put together. It's, it's Tying into the park side drive line, um, which my understanding is it's, it's got um, some slope limitations. Um, this over here? Yeah, because it's not like the falls that go over there yet. Yeah, yeah this is all. Sewer. Right, so if you go to the north, you know, yeah, there's sewer that's kind of off this, uh, to one side. It might be able to tie into that. Yeah, so in that area. This one right here. Yeah. Yep. But this, this doesn't connect. I you know there's been a question about line by uh, Orangeworth's uh, no. body shop there, so this wouldn't tie in. Do you have anything to do with that? No. no. Or really, it'd just be a question of amending the um, master plan, pulling these other properties. And then what does it do to cost this, right? What do you have? Um, what's your number in for you? Well, you know, the cost, when you add in the additional people, you get the cost of under two grand. Um, we we're uh, well over two grand with uh, half the units because like you still have a fixed cost in both cases, which is the pump station. Um, so, you know, the, that's when you're trying to distribute those costs, the more people that are using it, the better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you say it's under two grand, it's like 1998. No, it's, it's 1912. 1912. Versus so, what was it, 23, 24? Yeah, it was like right around 23, 24. I can't remember off the top of that, but it's right around that area. Because it was only, this has like 98 total EUs in it, I think. And then the other one only had like 45. Right. Well, we could present this to the town board and say, here's the reason why we want to uh, modify the uh, uh, master plan, add these others in. I can't imagine why they wouldn't, but you know, because um, that yeah. one of the arguments in the master plan at APRA was uh, affecting the uh, agricultural property that was along uh, Emerson Road to the north. That this would be incorporating now. So that where's that, and, where's uh, that MUO uh, rezoning property? Uh, oh, is that the one for a Z bar? No, no, no. Uh, it was uh, uh, he? He wanted to put two apartment buildings in. It, it was a. Uh, it was yeah. off of twenty eight. Actually, well, there was one here, Chuck. This guy here on Fire Fire Hall Road. Oh, yeah, right. wasn't that one? No. Wasn't that one? Okay. No. Uh, Is that the one over here, the Goodman Apartments. It's it, it just north of the apartments there, Jim. That the land just sold, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This right here, right, guys. This is. Uh, yeah, he's got a pond in the back of it, I think. Yeah. Right. Or, or, or water course. Okay. So, does he have? Does he have water out in front of our water? Does he have sewer out in front on twenty eight? Or would he uh, have to extend I it? Think so. I don't think there's sewer there. No. I okay. Think well, runs. 
um, from here down, like this way. Yeah, it runs. I don't think there's sewer here. I think it goes as far as the old McWilliams trailer park. Right? Okay. All right. Well, he'd have to extend it to get it to his property. So, but that doesn't help us up at Emerson. So, okay. No. All right. So this here, this is the Goodman. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Okay. He's got a zoning request in. Uh, don't you think it would be a good idea to maybe do the survey to see if people are interested before you go in and change the sewer master plan? I'm just going to ask if some party is interested in doing that. Oh, interested. Okay. Yeah. Just ask them that's how we do the next step. Yeah, then survey the interest before we make the amount. We would have to, you know, I don't know if we require a public hearing. We require a public hearing to adapt it. So I would, I would anticipate we require a public hearing to modify it. You know, so if I bring that up at the March 15th meeting, we would. Have that in the April meeting to uh, have the public hearing, you know, for a modification. And if we pass it, then then go to the next step. But just to have some indication of what cost would be and the, the reasoning behind it, I'd just like to present that to the board at our March fifteenth meeting. So, and then we'll did, take, did we, like you said, Chuck, go further. With. Did we take this same approach with Grandview to see if more people could get into that system? Um, Grandview was a larger uh, district. The problem that we ran into is that uh, the district didn't qualify. Because it used to be Grandview, County Road 4, uh, County Road 22, and State Route 21 was the, was the larger area. So then we looked at trying to make it smaller to make it more affordable versus larger because um, you know, we could possibly get in with like a low pressure sewer system or something like that for Grandview. So we, we did. And then we also sent them a letter and they said too expensive. We sent it twice, didn't we? Good. We sent it twice to them. They both both times said too expensive. The only, the only thing they can change is the, the scenario for that um, Grandview Park uh, kind of report sewer would be if the EA were, were going to be interested in from yeah. taking in the well, sewer district. That was kind of like the the yeah. tipping point possibly where you could make it more affordable for everybody if you had the EA participating. But well, Doug had said that you know where he got it, but somebody had told him that VA might be right. Right. Yeah, that might have a treatment plan. Plan. Right. Yeah. So well, that could be resurrected again if that occurs. So well, I like your idea, Terry. I think we ought to, you know, be, get basic agreement with the board before we go out to the homeowners, you know, so. Yeah, you don't want to build up anybody's home first. So. Right. We'll do that on the 15th and as long as everybody agrees, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, you could, let me have that stuff. I can uh, have Doug included in the, uh, yeah, back in Monday, they'll start putting together the agenda for the yeah, they can have the you know, you could email to us. Yeah. Okay. That one is easy. <laughs> of course, you probably wind up with a situation if you go back up to Emerson Road and we pull in um, two properties uh, east and west of. Uh, you know, uh, Rissa Road and mm -hmm. 28, you're going to have the neighbor getting it and the guy next door that. Yeah. Yeah. So I know. And that, that type of thing will be kind of, you know, you, when you get, if you get into the, the next phase of, of looking at the uh, design detail, that's when you run like an actual schematic sewer, you know, start to get actual grade checks out in the field, stuff like that, so you can verify uh, how far we can run the sewer. Yeah. I'm just saying if we get to that point, it could be a few phone calls. Oh, yeah. But, but that's what we can do. All right, well, let's move on to number two. The water project update. Water project update. Okay. Well, 
I said, we, we are, I said, we, <clears throat> the uh, second foundation is being constructed for the second tank. A lot of the work will be up there for the next several months to um, complete that. I would imagine late April, early May, should be done by the time they get done with concrete. Setting and constructing tank and so on and so forth. Once that's done, the majority of the major work will be completed. There'll be a lot of um, site work around the both the uh, pumps facility, pump facility and the um, tanks themselves when the weather is conducive for doing so. That's when they'll get their fencing in, the paving done. Um, you know, topsoil and seeding. Um, I guess some uh, minor drainage things they have to take care of at uh, both sides. So, we already had the tank is all from up there. I mean, pieces for yes, yeah, yeah, tank one is already there. So, um, they just need to assemble it. So, they got the like I said, they got the stone in so it can kind of store it right into the floor. Yeah, next week the color would uh. Or panels to make the ring and set the rebar and pour it. Then Crane Hogan will fill the stone, we'll do the rebar again and pour that and start the ring loss. This foundation is a little different than the foundation that was under the existing. Oh, yeah, much different. Um, the old tank had a, a three foot wide spread footer with a Three foot tall rebar, 12 inch thick concrete ring, and inside the concrete ring was just sand. So that was it. There was nothing, no major concrete removed. So, at yeah, the bottom of the tank was, uh, was, it was just the steel sitting on sand. Yeah. That's okay. And it lasted how many years? 53. 53 wow. Years. Makes you wonder. Greg's <laughs> <laughs> getting get picked out here by over engineering this yeah. thing. So. Uh, um, there's some good videos on our Facebook page if you guys haven't had a chance. Um, there's a great video of the tank being torn down, and there's also a video of um, Jim going through a presentation with a bunch of images and pictures from um, the whole process of the water project from last summer to um, recently. Uh, everyone understands that the whole tank came down in the part of the, the new building. Um, so the, the GC is repairing all that stuff. Uh, what, Sessler took the building down. When they took the building down, they put, I think they wanted to topple, but the way they pulled it, the, the columns kind of racked and then the top kind of spun a little bit. When it spun, oh, it came back towards the valve building and it clipped the corner of the valve building and damaged the gable then and some of the siding and um, gutter uh, and whatever. So Sessler's on the hook to repair all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, They're starting next week. Okay. Pump station on track? Yeah. 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 It's, it's running. It's all running. Out. It's we're, getting, we're getting close to punch list items for at least inside the the booster station. I think we have windows, although I don't think they have all the trim in, and I think they didn't bring the glass yet for the doors. Correct. So it's getting closer. Yeah, sound good. Get closer. Will it finish uh, for the original schedule? Then? It's it it close. Yeah. yeah. Sure. It's been close. Um, My guess is they'll probably need a, you know, a few weeks uh, past. Substantial, yeah. I think the final, I think it might still be okay with it. Yeah, schedule what, May, May, yeah. And they can, and everyone would be substantial provided bank one is online. Mm -hmm. That would be the last thing for uh, beneficial use, really. So, um, and then from that point, it would just be punch list. I guess most of your uh, materials are on site, so there's no material delays foreseen. 
All yeah. I could think would be concrete, Jack. Right. The okay. only thing, uh, with rebar, tank panels, a roof, uh, all that's sitting up there. So, okay. Uh, you know, possible some of the, you know, maybe a, a, some of the sensors or something like that maybe um, uh, out a little bit. Uh, they had to send the one radar unit back to the factory. So, I don't know how long that's going to take to come back. But we have the pressure drain two thirds of backup uh, that we're utilizing. Good. Oh, good. All right. Move along. Number three the Middle Cheshire Road Hospital Corridor Transportation Study. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at that. Uh, Al. Al smiling. So Al apparently has something to say. About I looked at it quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> And I should preface, there's a second version that just came out in the last couple of days. And oh, really? Yeah, February mm -hmm. edition. Yep. So it, awesome. it's, there, there are a lot of changes in it. But anyway, I guess we're here to discuss. I haven't uh, seen that yet, Chuck. Yeah, I think Sarah it just said, <laughs> <laughs> took all your comments, Jim, and <laughs> changed it. Now, I don't think they had a chance to see yours, but. Uh, I think it was based on uh, the CIC review and Doug's review, and they went back to the drawing board and uh, and revamped it a little bit. So make sure you take a look at it. But uh, yeah, we should talk about it in general today. I think that's a good idea. I think that's what the yeah. what the purpose. Well, it does take you back to your childhood and back when you were making out that list for Santa Claus, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And, you know, there's a lot in it, and any there's um a lot in it whatever comments you guys have to make uh glad to hear them and carrying forward i i guess uh you know basically i looked at it one time and then i made some comments i i look at again i pretty much stand by my comments i guess my two big concerns is you know are are we do we really have a need to do that extensive uh uh, an effort on, you know, Middle Cheshire Road, I'm not sure, uh, you know, we're going to have the kinds of pedestrian and bike traffic that would uh, really warrant that, that big an effort. And then the, the other big thing is uh, we've got a lot of priorities in the uh, town that I think would come before that. So I kind of like your idea, Terry, of basically, you know, accepting or acknowledging uh, receipt of the study and then we'll have to take a look at it and see if there's some uh, pieces of it that we can bite off but I don't I don't think the town board ought to you know say hey uh, thank you we're gonna adopt this I think you know okay. we need to take it and digest it and maybe we can bite off some pieces but I think we've got a lot of other competing priorities and I also uh, if we're going to, you know, make that much extensive an effort on a bike pedestrian uh, pathway going north south, I'm not sure Middle Cheshire's are really the place to do it. So, just some general comments. But I think there's a lot of concerns with, you know, how doable it is and whether that's the right priority at this point in time. Yeah, I I agree with you completely. It's a situation that I, you know, I have to take part of the blame for the way this thing turned out. Blame or not blame, maybe, but uh, this thing unfolded over the past year. And just about a year ago right now, you know, we were aware of this virus in this country, but we weren't prepared for what was coming at us. So this effort started out and it, I don't know. Honestly, I have to say, we just kind of lost track of it. There were meetings that were held, you know, virtual meetings by Zoom, just updating us on where they were in the, in the putting this plan together. But we're, our focus was on other areas. Our focus was on survival and trying to make sure that we could provide the services to the town that the town really needed. And this thing, in my, my, this is just my opinion, it got away from it. And it turned into this elaborate plan that I was looking at some of the numbers this morning before the meeting. I think the implementation of the whole thing was around between 10 and 12 million dollars. 
guess, but that's just never going to happen. But one of the other issues that I have with it is, I don't know why you tumbled to this earlier, is that this was really, this was a, a grant that was obtained by the town, but it incorporates large tracts of the city. The city was never really involved from a, you know, overview uh, as this plan was being put together. You know, from town city boundary and and, uh, and uh, Middle Cheshire Road there, just south of uh, Parish Street, and there on into the city, we can't obligate the city to do anything. As well as the trail that they proposed going from Middle Cheshire Road down to Westlake Road. Huge chunk of that is owned by the city. And, you know, that thing came in kind of late in the process. It was just thrown in. And I can still remember when that presentation was being made to the committee that was overseeing this thing. I was kind of uh, blown away by the magnitude of what they were proposing. I mean, in, in, in concept, it may look really nice and interesting and all that, but. In reality, uh, getting all the entities involved to agree to something like that and the cost, I just don't see it happening in the, the near term or the midterm. Maybe someday it would, but um, it's, it is a grand proposal. But that's my own feeling. I try to. Yeah, I, I wasn't involved in any of the uh, stakeholder meetings or public hearings. I, I don't know necessarily where the groundswell came for this project. Uh, obviously, there are people who use uh, Little Cheshire, mostly joggers and, and, and people, you know I, know, I know in your case, Terry, I know Tara and James walk Eli down to daycare yeah. periodically. So, I mean, that's, that's you know, it's, it's a point A to point B type thing. But a lot of it is just people going north to south, jogging. Uh, and I, I think they, they admitted somewhere in the report that, you know, the, the volume of pedestrian traffic isn't that great. Uh, they also mentioned that the vehicular traffic is low and there's been no major accidents, most of the accidents being deer strikes. Uh, so it's not like there's a, a terrible traffic issue out there. I, I know they they had a tragic fatality, uh, I guess, on Middle Cheshire with uh, the young man who was killed um, a couple of years ago. But uh, you know, that's I think that was the reason for the blacktop trail, right, Jim? Right. For the most part, yeah. And and right. the the way I see it, I, I I could see certainly possibly an improvement of the the path that we have now. I know it was sort of put in as a you know a knee jerk reaction to uh, what happened out there with the accident. Uh, but uh, you know that I, beyond that, wow! Some of those, some of those amenities they have planned, yeah. Jim. I was thinking, putting my public works hat. Yeah. You know, all these uh, what do they call them pl placemakers. Yeah, uh, we have benches and benches. and uh, signage and all that kind of stuff. It'd be a, it'd be a maintenance nightmare. And I, I did notice your comments on the fence. Uh, I think most of the fence has been taken out on the okay. second revision. Uh, they did have a little bit of guardrail. Um, the reason to cross Middle Cheshire at Wells Curtis, go down the west side to uh, Foster, then cross back over again. I mean, it just creates another maintenance issue in terms of uh, uh, highway markings. Uh, Jim, I know that, uh, you know, why have more crossings than you necessarily need because that's just gonna create more conflict points with pedestrians and vehicles. So uh, yeah, I, I think it was way overcooked and uh, you know, the intersection of five and 20, it'd be nice to do something there. And I think possibly if we could get uh, uh, a pedestrian crossing signal, uh, that would certainly be helpful with, with crosswalks. But beyond that, I don't, I don't see much else that can be done there without spending a whole lot of money. Obviously it would require working with NIDOT and uh, access to the switchback trail, good idea. I think the switchback trail, if you're gonna do that, should be improved also. I think they mentioned that in the report. Um, and I, it sounds from your review, Jim, that you're not uh, too keen on the idea of a path running uh, east to west uh, along the city water no. property. Um, I know that was something that 
came up at the CIC that they were, cons they, you know, Doug was concerned that, hey, we need people to get from Middle of Cheshire down to the lake. It's not necessarily, again, a north to south movement. It's more of an east to west, west to east movement, people going up and down that hill. And, uh, you know, the switchback allows for that. So maybe an improvement of that. Uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers. Yeah, there, there were a couple of grammatical errors. Uh, lighting of intersections. They don't mention the street lighting at all. Uh, I think that's a, a concern at some of the intersections. I know we do have street lights, but maybe there's other ones that need it. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers it for now. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's 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 way overbaked, and I think uh, if they if they filtered it down and watered it down a little bit, I think to it, basically a a combination uh, pedestrian bike path uh, improve that that would be uh, money well spent rather than all this other stuff they talk about. I think one of the initial drivers for the project or this study was the completion of the trail from by Jack Adams house into the uh, into the bypass and then getting across the bypass into the city. That was I mean that's something a lot of people have mentioned over the years, you know, finishing that connection. But then it just grew like topsy. I mean it just you know took on a life of its own with all these other amenities. Out where I live, uh, near Wells Curtis Road, there are people that walk. I mean, we walk out there a little bit. And it's the same people every day, but I mean, you don't need two hands to count the number of people on a daily basis to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the speed limit is 55 off by my house. And we've never had any accidents. We had deer strikes, and I've done it myself right out in front of my property coming home from work one night. But you know, going down Wells Curtis Road and the kind of things they point out to do there is really physically impossible, right? I mean, you just can't do it. They maintain that there's room enough to do it. The guy that knows all about it says, no, you no. can't. So, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, Jim was really never uh, part of the steering committee uh, no. either, which- Yeah, that's a pleasure. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it, there are elements, as you say, of it that could be picked out that you and Al both said it could be used, maybe not not in the grandiose fashion that they outlined, but just finishing that connection, sharing the plan with the city, and say, here's some ideas of study uh, produced that you may want to take into consideration. You know, in the city around the hospital area, uh, Ferris Street and the uh, you know, uh, West Street, uh, we certainly do that with the city, but. As far as I'm concerned, and we will acknowledge receipt of the report so that we can get reimbursed by the Genesee uh, Regional Transportation Council and pay for the grant. I think it was 40 or 50 grand, yes. something like that altogether. So uh, it has to be done by the end of the month, hence uh, having it on the agenda on March 15th. So okay. we'll do that, but we won't use words like adopt or install or any, anything like that. So the resolution will be written that way. Doug's already is fully aware of that and that's how it will be written. So yeah, I do recommend you look at the uh, revised uh, yeah. and, plan. It, it takes care of some of the issues you had, Jim, uh, and uh, it didn't it didn't forego the uh, trail by the uh, water towers, but uh, it did take care of some of the fence and some of the other items you had. I was wondering why uh, between 5 and 20 and Parish, that section where they put the new medical center back there, why they didn't require sidewalks to be part of that unless, unless their frontage, that isn't their frontage maybe. You, you know what I'm talking about? Across from Dr. Uh, the dentist? Uh, well, it might be the church. The church the there actually. Well, the church is at the corner, yeah. Yeah, but the, the municipal line doesn't run down the center of the road, Chuck. It runs at an angle through there. It's really well. Yeah, I was thinking why the city didn't require uh, oh, the, well, uh, uh, yeah. of Thompson when they built the uh, the new medical group. So, oh. Could have gotten it then. Yeah, yeah. Well, the big thing would be crossing by the crossing the bypass. I mean, that's a an issue that oh boy, really need a lot of 
cooperation, cooperation between the LP and all the various entities involved. Right? I don't know if you put down starter blocks and fire a pistol and get people to go across the, their fault. I mean, it's a, it's not a, it's a dangerous intersection. I mean, we, I'm sure Chuck, you've been at that intersection and seen a, an 18 wheeler coming down the hill and the light changes and it breeze right through it. You know? I mean, it's, yeah. yeah, it's bad enough in a car, let alone if you're on foot. So crossing the road is going to only be for the quick. <laughs> It'd be the quick in the, 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 the right. right. And we're beyond quick. That means well, you see a lot of you see a lot of skid marks there on the road heading uh, eastbound too, from uh, tractor trailers and, uh, and okay, cars. Yeah. You know, so they don't yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, make sure you said. well, well known. So next up is Caitlin, the transfer collection, transfer station collection boat, oh, okay. and trans transfer station planning in general. Yeah, so I got a little presentation for everybody today. Oh. <laughs> um, so I usually put this together every year right around the time that I file our annual reports with the DEP. Um, I like to take a look at what our collection totals were for the year and, and kind of sum those up. Um, so I always like to start with the um, Ontario County Local Solid Waste Management Plan. Um, so, um, the, the county has a 10 year planning document. We're sort of getting to the end of that, um, documents lifespan. It's, um, goes through 2024. So we know the county is kind of starting to, to take a look at this. Uh, but the main points are, um, that the, um, county sets solid waste goals and objectives, including recovery and overall waste reduction. Um, but really everything um, remains decentralized with the municipalities at the local levels making all of the solid waste related decisions. So um, I think that that's something to keep in mind as we are moving forward with this, uh, this process of planning the transfer station. Um, so here's an interesting chart. Um, in the beginning of the pandemic, we were tracking collection totals really closely um, for a number of reasons. Um, so here we have what was collected in um, 2020, what the average of the previous five years was and what the percentage of that average was. So our biggest month is April here. So in April, we co collected 143% of um, municipal solid waste of what we usually do. We collected 176% of C&D and 126% of recycling. Um, so we all know that that was kind of a crazy, scary time during all of those, um, during that month when we were collecting all of those amounts of materials, our residents were staying in their cars. So all of our highway, water, and transfer station operators were hauling these materials from our residents' cars to the transfer station. Um, and just, I've been, I was reflecting on um, this while I was putting this report together, and that was a really scary time. You know, we couldn't even buy masks. Oh, you know, we had, I was sewing masks at home on my sewing machine. Kathy was, Gary, I know your wife made a lot of masks for the guys. So um, I think that that is really interesting to look at and really reflect on that, you know, we know it was a difficult year, and especially in these first months of the pandemic. Um, our, our transfer station guys and, and all the highway and water guys really pitched in and, and made a big difference. Okay, so I always like to put this together. So these are broken down. We have our municipal solid waste, our regular household garbage, our C&D and our recycling. Uh, each bar is a different year. So we have 2015 to 2020 on each of these materials. Overall, we're staying pretty similar. We had a little bump up in garbage this year as the last chart showed you. Um, it was kind of a unexpected bump this year. 2019. Oh, I didn't update these. Oh, okay. 
I use, I use the same chart, but this is 2020. Um, yeah, that was definitely the number. Um, thanks, Terry. I'll fix that. Um, so we had a bump up in uh, municipal solid waste. C and D was actually down a little bit. Um, this year is the year that we had um, the old highway facility was taken down. So that is kind of a statistical anomaly there. And our recycling's pretty much stayed, stayed the same throughout. That first year though, Kate, we were, that would be 2000. So that would be- 2016, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20. I wonder why. Um, something happened here. Yeah. I don't know that our C and D was necessarily being yeah. reported right. correctly. I yeah. think if we kind of averaged all of them out, it would be um, about the same. Okay. Caitlin, do you have a chart like that for the organics or is that included in your recycling? Um, no, so that is just recycling. We'll get to that in a minute, Pal. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so what does that really all mean? I like to kind of break those numbers down. So our daily average for materials sent to the landfill is 5.99 tons. Um, that's up from 5.76 tons last year. So that means that every single day in the town of Canandaigua, uh, transfer station permit holders are producing almost 12,000 pounds of trash every single day. Um, so that's a lot of garbage. Um, in 2021, or in 2020 and 2021, we've issued 20, just over 2,000 transfer station permits to about 1,500 households. Um, so each household is producing just under eight pounds of trash every day, which is up from about six pounds of trash in 2019. Um, so I always like to use the image of a football. A football weighs about a pound. Um, so that's about eight footballs worth of garbage that each household is producing every day, um, which works out to be 53 pounds of trash at the end of the week. Um, so a lot of garbage, definitely some room for improvement there. Um, this was interesting, the plastic bag and film collection in 2020, I thought that I would be um, talking to you guys about a lot bigger of a dip. Um, because here is when um, the plastic bag ban was supposed to go into effect in March. Mm. Uh, many of our local retailers did um, stop using plastic bags in March. Um, some of them continue to use bags throughout, um, I believe, until October. And October is when um, the official plastic bag ban went into effect. And we're still seeing pretty good collection numbers for that program. Um, what that tells me is our residents are aware of the other types of plastic bag films that we can collect. You know, things like when you order an Amazon package and there's those plastic shipping pillows in there, bubble wrap, um, all materials like that, you know, things the wrapping around your paper towels or a case of water bottles. Um, so I was really encouraged to see that residents are aware of that and, and are taking advantage of that program. Could be also that, I mean, so many people ordered things online last fall that that volume, that reflects that. Absolutely. Online buying. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that I think is all, you know, December, yeah. November, and December are busy retail months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that certainly um, would account for this kind of uptick here. And the food waste, um, I didn't put the total. So unfortunately our food waste collection totals overall through the year were way down compared to 2019. Um, we brought in about half of the amount of food waste we did as 2019. Um, so I reached out to our uh, Impact Earth who is a third party that hauls the food waste um, just to kind of pick their brain about if they're seeing this across the board. Um, I had read an article that, you know, as we entered the pandemic, a lot of people had to shift their focus on, you know, schooling their kids at home. You know, how are they going to navigate all of the challenges that the pandemic presented? And one of the first things to go on the back burner were kind of 
green and sustainable initiatives. Um, so that is, you know, maybe one factor. Um, also, we did not do as much communication about the program this year as we have. Um, you know, I didn't really want to muddy the waters when we were communicating um, again about our operations in general at the transfer station and kind of navigating that pandemic. So um, our collection totals were definitely down. We did start to see them pick up again in November and December. Um, again, around the holidays are um, generally a time. Um, I was also wondering too, if um, this was affected by our seasonal residents, if they weren't traveling um, as much, if that could have kind of uh, affected our collection levels. So um, I definitely like to focus on some more education regarding this program. Um, coming up this year, I did actually just this morning get two emails from residents with questions about the program. Um, so we do still have uh, some interest in, and I think we can get those totals back up. So I wonder if people also were not, you know, throwing food away that they would, I mean, because there were shortages and things like that. That's a really good point I hadn't thought of. They were eating the leftovers. They were yeah. on the vendor refrigerator and two weeks later throwing them away. I wonder if there was some conservation. Type That's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. They're also just not going to store as much. Nope. So, you know, yeah. you know, stuff that went going to waste. They yeah. encourage nearly as much. They can't be in my house. household. The kids are home eating more uh, yeah, than yeah. the house and home. The fridge is empty all the time. Yeah. I might open up, like, where all food go? That's a good point. Yeah, I have not thought about that. You might have had more backyard composting, too. Oh, yeah. You know, true. that that's what I would like to believe, Chuck, and, and I hope that's true. But it's, you know, there's no way to, to quantify that. Um, so here we have all of our materials um, broken down um, by, you know, the year. So as you can see here, the food waste, we went from 13, this is all in tons. We went from over 13 tons in 2019 to just about eight in 2020. Um, plastic bags stayed about the same. Um, textiles and e-waste both stayed the same. Um, I was surprised to see that this number wasn't higher. Um, with everybody cleaning out basements and garages and things like that, um, that was a little bit surprising to see that lower number. A little higher in metal, again, um, kind of suspected for, you know, the, the year that we had. Um, so calculating our diversion rate is dividing everything that doesn't go to the landfill by the materials that do. We got 39% um, holding steady from 2019 was the same. Any questions about any of that? That's interesting. Very good. The total you had there for uh, solid waste mm -hmm. was not all that much different than 19, but yet I can remember coming over here and March and April and May and I mean people are just there's a lot of clean attics and clean cellars and garages mm -hmm. now because everything was going out but overall for the year it wasn't too much unlike uh, 2019. Yeah well when we start talking about tons yeah. you know a ton of uh, garbage yeah. is a lot so what yeah. may look like a lot when you really yeah. break it down by tons yeah. doesn't look like as much. The textiles is that stuff that goes into that yellow okay. Yep. Huh. Well, there's gonna, um, well, that's it goes, might all just jump right into the planning, too. Yep. What you've heard in that area from the county is what we've all heard. Um, I think Terry forwarded the county um, board of supervisor just, just approved their strategic plan. Um, so that kind of highlights four key focus areas. Um, so as the, the county starts working on those, um, one of the key focus areas is gonna be equal and adequate access. So what that means is they want any resident in the county to have um, access to, to some of the programs that we have at our transfer station that at some of the smaller towns they don't have access to. Things like food waste and plastic bags and um, all of those items. Um, so 
Carla is going to be putting together a group of um, municipal transfer station operators as kind of a working group um, sometime, I believe, in the next month or so. Um, so I thought a good first step for us um, before that meeting would be kind of to make a list of some of the pros and cons of our transfer station. Uh, we talk, you know, we all talk about them a lot and we know what they are, but I think making a list and, and kind of detailing those would kind of help us in our planning process, um, identifying the things, especially that aren't working at the transfer station that we want to improve on. Um, we started doing that. Putting well, together. We're going to talk about it today. Yeah, but, we uh, thought we would kind of get your guys' opinion and then I'll get it a little bit more formalized and kind of top, typed up. So, um, the thing we probably talk about the most is um, permits, I would yes. say, um, and kind of tracking that only town residents are using the program. Um, traffic. Traffic. Traffic maneuvers. Yeah, tra traffic safety, you know, people um, both in their vehicles and exiting their vehicles. You know, I know in the wintertime it's not perhaps as practical as summer or fall like that, but last um, March, April, when, when this whole thing started, the lanes that were set up out there, people really followed that and were really diligent about waiting until they could move up. And but when the cones disappeared, it's just this yep. free for all again, you know. Yeah. Um just an observation, but no I, I, I you know, that. <laughs> yeah. That's, and I think related to that, but a separate item would be um kind of signage and wayfinding within the transfer station itself. Um, you know, signage to, you know, residents sometimes aren't aware that we have electronics recycling because it's kind of in a back room and there's not a great sign that says, bring your electronics here. Um, I also get a lot of questions. How come we don't have a giant poster that says, this is what you can recycle and this is what you can't recycle. Um, so kind of increased signage and, and wayfinding is definitely something. I was reviewing our, um, we did that transfer station survey about a year and a half, two years ago, and I was reviewing some of the comments. And, um, that was definitely a frequent request was for better signage. <coughs> Um, I think that staffing can sometimes be an issue for us. We've been pretty good lately, but there's been times where we've struggled to um, find staff to work at the transfer station. Would you agree with that, John? Yeah, I would, because you know, a couple of good people for a while, and they leave, and they have some good people. And, okay, we can't find anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Leave in April. Yeah. 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 So leave in April, which I don't blame them. So I'm surprised we fill that spot. Um, you know, staffing and also the, um, I don't say it's con, but like we've created a, I'll say a culture, like the better term, over the years of uh, some residents. Just pull up, blow their horn, and <coughs> so that can get unloaded because we have people here that when they're not, they get short and rude to the staff that is here because they're waiting too long to <coughs> get out of their vehicles with their trash. Um, you know, some of the stuff we have to put back on the person who's bringing the material here, like. It's your job to unload your trash. Not we're here to assist you if needed. I realize you're in full service. Yes, <laughs> <I'm old. laughs> in LA and park your own. Right, right. exactly. So, there's that. So I guess that's a good question. So you know, education would be you know, education about operations, about how to handle materials. Um, I don't know if that's you know. I think that we've definitely 
invested a lot in education, but maybe there's areas we need to focus on more coming up in the next year. So I don't know if that would be a pro or a con. You know, it's very much an ongoing thing. Right. You know, we while we've done it, you know, there's still always more to do. So maybe that's just an ongoing need. Maybe that's a third category. We need, you know, pros, cons, and ongoing issues or something. Maybe I'll frame it a little differently than pros and cons. How's the uh, use of the mirror hangers been going? Uh, do you think you have what kind? How much compliance? Oh, that's a good question, Chuck. I've been out there in a while to to observe, like on Wednesdays and weekends. So. Yeah, I know we talked about uh, having ambassadors stand out there to uh, inform people. Uh, and maybe that's something we could think about for the spring or summer. Uh, I, again, I volunteer. I'd be willing to go out and shake some, shake some people. <laughs> okay. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, call Jim Fletcher. No, but I think, I think that's part of the educational process uh, that should be done. And, uh, yeah, well, I think back to that the structure that we had in place, you know, last spring. I mean, that really forced people to, you know, follow the rules that we want them to follow. I mean, there are physical barriers there. Yep. And it, you know, it really, it really helped, I think, with that enforcement. Um, not necessarily having to hang the tags and all that, but I mean, from a safety uh, standpoint, and, I think the first lane was, uh, you know, people that didn't feel safe getting out. Well, we didn't right. for a while. We didn't let them out. Wouldn't let people get out. But that's when you had the crew, crew split. So you had nine or ten guys there on each day. So it was a lot easier. It wasn't just two or four guys. You know, right. And that, that certainly now isn't practical uh, you know, to do. But, um, and it, it, it's... Something else I, I think we should explore as we're talking about a new transfer station are hours of operation. That was something else I saw a lot on um, comments from the survey is um, extended hours of operation, especially during the summer. That was um, something that people noted. Yes, yeah, so on the data throw or versus the county is. Yeah, yeah can't. and I think they'll probably talk more about that once they get all the municipal operators together. Um, that's definitely something that the county wants to see. The hours of operation also have an impact on some of the other issues like traffic and safety. You know, but instead of four hours on a Saturday and Sunday morning, if it was six hours or if it was more days per week, mm -hmm. you know, traffic volume would drop and anyone. Well, it would take a little while to get people yeah. adjusted to yeah. different hours. I know sometimes you come over here at like 11 30, 11 45 on Saturday morning, and it's really backed up. Other times, it's hard to anybody. It's right. I mean, it's really, a, it's like trying to grab a handful of smoke. You really forget what you know. But kind of what came up on um, uh, the Check traffic view that people can check their <laughs> oh, time. Like yeah, check, <laughs> check their wait time before they come over. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got any suggestions on the TV? Right. Any suggestions, you three? You're basically just talking about you know things to study, not right. necessarily in relation to this county plan here. No, we're talking as we move through the process of planning a new <clears throat> station, you know, kind of quantifying some of the issues that we know are things we want to address as we move forward in the planning process. Well, I think one of the things that came out in the county plan and we talked about before is this idea of um, cost sharing, fee-based. So that's something we'll have to really take a look at fee-based and and as I think about that, I almost, uh, I like the idea better of charging people for their passes, you know, a standard fee rather than having some kind of weight system or 
pay as go side system to me you know everything we do in life we try to streamline it a little and get away from this pay each time you go type thing you know you buy a season pass or you do something like this i think it's a nightmare to kind of go to and it's really going to change the cost of setting up right. a facility and it's really going to degrade you know the speed and the efficiency of moving through so i think we ought to seriously look at you know an, an annual fee type basis rather than a kind of a pay-as-you-go uh, type of a system because i think it would be much more efficient much more acceptable than you know having people weigh their pound of trash as they come in and stuff like that but that's something we definitely need to uh, look at and we talked about going to other um, transfer stations to see how they do that but I, I I'm really not keen on the idea of pay you know pay as you go each time you go I'm more of a you know pay pay an annual fee and there's no reason why uh, residents who want to use the transfer station can't pay an annual, annual fee so either you pay either you get a, a private commercial uh, trash guy or you uh, pay an annual fee at the transfer station to me that's a that's a fair way to go yeah. now what about a resident that um just needs to they bought a new couch or a new tv and they need to come in once to use the transfer station well you could use a similar system to what we have i mean just use that as a you know have an annual I just think that a lot of you know the annual fee to use the, the, the system and perhaps uh, I don't know, have a single shot line, you know, where if you just have a you call ahead and make an arrangement or you know, it, it, yeah, I, I think most people when they use the transfer station use it, you know, it's a yeah, I could see be. like take Al's part for municipal solid weights, but maybe you do have a scale for the C and D. Well, and that way there you're not having somebody estimate what's the back of the truck. Like, I think, like, are we really are we overpaying or are we getting ripped off by not charging enough? Yeah. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, re that removes some of the conflict there as well as, you know, I come in and I'm like, really, you're going to charge me three coupons? I think it should only be, two, you know, two. The, right. You know, the, it's kind of a cut and dry. And um, then if we're also going to be talking about if we're in the hub where the spokes are coming to, you know, how do we charge for that? If we're not, uh, if uh, we're uh, outside of our community. Well, theoretically, yeah, we're not, theoretically, we're not supposed to be taking somebody who's engaged in a commercial activity and using us to uh, dump stuff, are we? You know, it's supposed to be more of a, you know, household type thing, not commercial activities. Um, yeah, but right. if you have, like, if you have a shed or something, you rip off the roof and you're going to put a new one in, yeah. you're bringing that into the, you know, C&D bin. I mean, the other with the spoken hubs thing too, depending on how that shakes out, and if we're the hub, and depending on how many spokes there are out there, something that could also come up is we may not have enough space over here for that. Right. It may have to be located someplace else. So, did you look for, I was just looking when I came in this morning that the hand out there from the, you know, what, you just take a quick look at it and it looks like it goes from you know the parking lot all the way over to the, the hydro but you got that pen that's out there quite a way so you gotta you have to relocate that or have to depending on what the county uh would like to see us doing what we agree to we need another site for it maybe out right. here and back you know and the, got 75 acres out there. That's open space, buddy. You're going, yeah. to, you're, going, you're going to be duking it out with somebody. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> uh, property the town owns and that not agree with it. So. No, I'm just saying that until, until there, there's this, this gathering and this 
some more clear direction from the county, it's going to be difficult to really start a really focused plan. So, yeah, hopefully that does happen this month. Later in the month. Right. Well, that's one of the things on this study we're referring to. You know, our own internal study is uh, just how much hub stuff we want to get involved in. You know, do we want to offer? like we're doing for the city, we're offering some bulk type stuff to come here. You know, do we want to offer that to Bloomfield or, you know, just how big a hub we have for the, but I think we have a big space there over, you know, where we tentatively talked about uh, moving a transfer station. I mean, if we can't operate in that space, we're, we're in trouble. Well, the, depending on how big that hub and spoke thing is, might not be uh, using our truck to haul out these containers. You might need some larger equipment to handle yeah. much larger volumes. So, I mean, it all depends on what that is. What does that look like? I mean, if it's us plus Bloomfield, eh, that's no big deal, you know. And even the city, I mean, the city probably, well, I don't know if the city would abandon their um, trash pickup or not, you know, in favor of using something like this. I would think they'd maintain that. So from the city, you'd really be looking at situations pretty much like what we have now. See, so that's yes. not going to add too much of a burden. So yeah, yeah maybe we have enough space, but so there's more definition to that. It's difficult to really plan um, what this thing would look like. And, uh, um, I do, one of the, I was just thinking, you know, I agree with that annual permit type uh, fee thing. Now that if the thrust is going to be trying to get people to separate out garbage, you know, uh, organics from trash, mm -hmm. just an annual fee, and you can throw away whatever you want. How do you get people to make that separation? You know, somehow there's got to be a and, and there's other pay as you throw um options besides just an annual fee you know there's certain bags that you have to use or stickers that you have to have it so you're paying per bag instead of having to weigh it again that gets us into policing issues but um i'm not completely sold on the pay as you throw but i feel like i have to play the devil's advocate because everybody else is kind of against it but you know, we don't know what's going to happen in 2028. If our landfill closes and we're having to haul further, you know, we're going to have to start really encouraging our residents a little bit more strongly to divert some of these things. Um, and really, the most effective way to do that is, you know, to hit them in their pocketbooks. So if you're paying for your garbage and your food waste and recycling are free you're going to take advantage of those programs um and i know something that um you had brought up before when we were talking about it is kind of dual planning where we have roll-offs but if we needed to start hauling and tractor trailers because we're going further to different distances that we have the ability to to pivot at that time because our, our future, you know, it's 2021 and 2028 is, is just around the corner. Um, and as we're building a new transfer station, I think that this is a good opportunity to start some of these changes that aren't going to be popular because we all know what a hot topic and what a trigger point the transfer station is for our residents. And they really don't like to see change out there. So if we build a new transfer station and get everybody used to one system, and then five years later we have to change it again, and then five, you know, I think that if we can minimize the amount of changes we're going to have to do in the future by strategic planning, I think that that would be a benefit to our residents in town. Yeah, that's why you got to work from the disposal site backwards. You got to know where your disposal site is coming up in the future because that'll generate the whole infrastructure regarding transfer stations and all that moving back. And then you can, when it comes to our local area to the, to the town, then we can decide how our system is set up to, uh, to uh, provide for it and collect it. So uh, yeah, one, one thing that uh, when Al brought up the, uh, the lump sum or annual fee, and you hit it on the head, uh, Caitlin. People have no incentive to recycle 
uh, if they're if everybody's paying the same amount. And the other thing is, if you got a family of six paying the same amount as an older couple, uh, you know, where's the equity there too? And that's why you have user fee systems to people. You know, you pay for what you use. I mean, we have it with our water system. We pay based on uh, on, on usage. Contrast sewer. We pay all lump sum for sewer. So. You know, it doesn't matter how many times uh, you use the sewer system, you're paying the same rate. So that's sort of the contrast. But uh, yeah, you've got to incentivize people to recycle and you know, weight-based systems, uh, volume-based systems are sort of the way to go. I, I know it, uh, when I worked uh, uh, down in Southeastern Pennsylvania, we did our own collection. We knew a weight-based system was just going to be fraught with problems regarding the scales, the reporting, how you get the information from the the trucks to the to the to the uh, you know the the home base the mainframe where you're keeping track of the records, uh, so we went with a volume based system which is essentially people would pay for it depending on the size of their container. If you wanted a 96 gallon toter, uh, you paid a certain rate. If you wanted a 45 gallon toter and you had less trash, you paid a lesser rate. And we had automated trucks and they'd go and they'd service uh, those containers and we'd only pick up what was in the containers because anything outside the containers uh, would either be left or you'd have to call in for a special pickup and pay for it. So, I mean, being that we don't control the collection side of things other than people come to the transfer station, makes it a little tougher, but uh, hopefully that's a little bit of a primer on why you use weight-based systems or user-based systems rather than uh, just going with a lump sum fee. A lot of questions. So I'm just gonna... <laughs> And, and my understanding from when Carla came and, and presented to this group is that, you know, if we did choose to go with something like a weight-based system, my understanding is that the county is going to maintain those scales and, you know, they're going to service them and that basically they would pay to have them designed and put in and all the infrastructure kind of around that. Um, so, you know, that's something else to think of as we are talking about programs. That if we do choose to go on a route of, you know, a weight based system, what are the long term, you know, costs of that machinery and what is the lifespan and the software costs and, you know, the administrative costs of, you know, the, you know, the office end as well as our, you know, staff at the transfer station who are helping our residents to operate. Well, and hopefully they consider that as they develop their plan, uh, that, that, you know, they're going to have to, again, work from the disposal backwards and take care of, you know, what, what kind of costs do they have incurred uh, in between the, the pickup and the, and the, the dumping. Yeah. Yeah, it will be interesting to hear what the county is answer to that question is yes, where is that disposal site? 2028 is the, number. That's the key. I mean you're you're gonna be pay, we're gonna be paying more. The whole count all the residents are gonna be uh -oh. paying more for tip fees. I mean that's gonna be a given for sure. I then mean, it's just county, a matter of how far you gotta haul it. The county doesn't say that that landfill is gonna close in 2028. That's when the contract with the solid is up. Plenty of room out there. If you restricted that just to Ontario County. Mm -hmm. I bet that you have a lot more years to go out there than 2028. But the county hasn't really kind of all those you point out, Katie, when they don't say that the landfill could have closed, they say, you know, their contract with Casella lasts through that date. Yeah, the lease agreement with Casella right. expires in 2020. They're very cagey and cautious in the way they present that. So it well, may have something in mind. I, we don't know. Well, even if, even if they take only Ontario County trash, uh, I'm sure the cost would go up of, of taking trash oh, because yeah. Yeah. because right now the outside trash is helping to offset the cost to the county residents in terms of uh, oh, what, yeah. what we pay. Yeah, I think fee would be much higher than 35 bucks a ton. But uh, you're, you wouldn't have to haul it as far, you're right. And uh, the, the other item is as part of the lease agreement with Casella, we're locked in at um, zero dollars per ton for recycling. They operate the materials recovery facility. Once that agreement expires, 
we may start having to pay some sort of fee for recycling as well. For sure. Not, for only, sure. not only is trash going to go up, but recycling is as well. Yep. Well, I agree that, uh, you know, if you go, each time you go, you got to weigh it or do something and pay, it's going to give you more of an incentive to recycle. So, so uh, you know, maybe we should still go to some of those places and see what they're doing. One, one of the things I kind of wonder, do you, you know, do they have some automated system that accumulates somebody's, what they owe you versus, you know, you got to exchange credit cards or money each time you do it, whether you, you build some kind of automated account system, but, but you're absolutely right, uh, Terry. And so oh, on that, uh, ball app, honestly. I know that, um, so we did visit the, um, Manchester transfer station. They have scales. Um, and the way that they work it is you get, um, like a card. It's like a debit card. Uh, you go to your town clerk's office and you can put, you know, X amount of dollars on your card. And then every time you come, you just scan your card. Okay. You know, they say, okay, hey, just so you know, you only have $5 left on your card. And, you know, you refill your card at the town clerk's office. And just scan that as you weigh. <laughs> do you have to drive over the scale twice? Or do they have a tear weight for your <laughs> you car? You take the materials out of your car and they have two scales. Um, okay. And there's one for C&D and one for garbage. Right. There's one for C&D and one for garbage. And so you put it on the according scale. So, but it, it's not like what you think of like a bathroom scale. You know, there's like a glass door you lift up, you put the materials in, you close the door, it weighs it, dumps it. Oh, okay. I was thinking like a truck scale. Okay. You don't drive the car up onto it. It's a scale for just the garbage. Yep. So instead of throwing your garbage into a, a packer container, you basically lift this glass door, put it in, close the glass door. It weighs it and dumps it and, and does its thing. And then it tells you what you owe and you scan your, your little debit card. So just, just how big is this container you're putting? Can you, it only can put one uh, bag full of trash in there, or does it hold multiple bags? Big. Pardon me? It's not very big, you know. I know. No, I usually not. come in. You know, I, I try to avoid my number of trips. I'll come in. I got six bags of stuff, so I got to stand there. And yeah, they, it it would it'd be their situation is good because it's a less populated yeah. town. Yeah. But they don't they have, the, have to uh, have the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Do something totally different, but that is just one option of pay as you throw. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more questions than there are answers. Yeah. But I, I think that we shouldn't um, rule out exploring pay as you throw options as, as we kind of have an uncertain future as far as waste disposal goes. I, I think that unfortunately, I know it's not very popular, but I do think that it may be the way of the future. Well, there's got to be bigger scale systems than just having a little plastic bin and yeah. yeah, and that and that's just one option. And they are a much smaller transfer station, a much with a much lower population. Um, so we would definitely have to explore options that would be able to accommodate the the volumes that that we have at our transfer station. I think if we use the uh, generic term user base systems rather than weight based that that allows us to think about volume based also and other types of so rather than having a scale system which is you know jim would have to have a, a scale expert on site probably when it's an operation because those scales go down they you know and you've got cars lined up and the scales broken what do you do uh, those kind of things so i i think we ought to look at all options regarding user systems whether it's a uh, weight or weight based or volume based and i believe that's how the county refers to it in that strategic plan is, is user fee based system mm -hmm. um and they and the last page of that document that terry sent to you um is really nice they have um what they think anticipate to be common questions and i think the first one is what is a user fee based system and it kind of explains it um so that's something that the the county is definitely trying to get out ahead of because they know it's not a popular um topic
topic and it can be a little confusing to run through. Well, I agree we need to look at all options, but in my engineer mind, uh, a volume system would be much more difficult than a weight system. But, but I agree we need to look at all options. And maybe we do a little a little bit of both you know maybe the we do like a sticker you know you got to have a sticker on each bag of garbage but like jim said we have a scale for c and d or you know maybe we kind of do some sort of hybrid to stop taking that well that's like ultimately there probably will be some hybrid but um whatever happens in the end we blame the county yeah <laughs> i think like no one likes it when the phone starts <laughs> ringing Call County. They're pushing us. Call Terry. Call Terry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they got to find us a dump site. And once they do, then we can sure. work it backwards. I'm sure some of you uh, guys with with white hair or maybe a little balding uh, can remember the old burn barrel in the backyard. Oh yeah. You know. <laughs> care a lot of stuff. Still a lot of that still today. Oh yeah. Yeah, my neighbor does that. So. <laughs> Well, we've probably beaten this horse about as far as we can with the ground. Well, it was a good discussion. discussion. Sure was. So I'll, I'll kind of type up some of these notes and, and get them formalized. And um, and then we can kind of have a, a bit of a map moving forward. Um, the other thing um, you did bring up, Al, is um, doing some field trips and visiting some things. Jim and I were just talking about that this morning. Yep. Uh, we've got kind of a short list of places that um, we would like to, to take a look at. I think that that would be a really good next step for us, um, kind okay. of um, visiting and seeing what we like and what we don't like. Sounds good. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're ready to dismiss the class. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everybody you. ready for spring next week? Yes. <laughs> Bring it on. Watch out for those daffodils and crocus. They're going to shoot out of the ground. Uh, yep. I've got some already popping up. All right. Well, see All you right. next month. Y'all have, have a good week. Have a good weekend. Hey, everyone.